The knights now lay siege to the Lithuanian town of Vilnius, and Yogaila and Vitautis hurried to the rescue. It was to be the first time that they fought side by side. In today's episode, we will explore the Siege of Vilnius, a Defend the Spot scenario which introduces the day and night cycle to Age of Empires 2. We will also talk about map design in general, and how we go about crafting a map that not only looks good, but suits the intended gameplay. Welcome to Making Jarviga! Now that you have your outline, it's time to start working on the actual scenarios. Yes, after three full episodes you finally get to open the editor. The first thing to do is to pick a map size and then sketch out all the important features, such as rivers, mountains and impenetrable forests. Anything that will act as a barrier for the player and direct the flow of gameplay. You can also mark out the roads and where the players are going to start with placeholder town centers. Once you have all that, take a good look at the map. Does it look the way you imagined? Maybe the scenario is too cramped, or too spacious. If so, you can pick a different map size and try again. By sketching out the features early on, you can avoid having to make drastic changes to the map later, when you've already sunk hours and hours of detailed work into it. Once you're satisfied with the general outline of the map, you can start actually designing. If you've been following this series, you may have seen that I normally start by designing all the key areas. The towns or fortresses, important geographic locations, and possibly even side quest areas, which I know will need a lot of room. In my experience, it's best to begin with these and fill in the blanks later. That way, if you run out of space later on, you will be sacrificing the relatively superfluous in-between areas, and not the ones required for the core gameplay. Apart from this, I don't really plan the map design ahead of time. I just jump to the section I feel most like designing and then I just keep working. I find that it's easy to get into a flow state this way, and before you know it, half a day will have passed. How you design your map is going to depend entirely on its purpose. In official campaigns, we usually want some form of open landscape that's well suited for build and destroy, with multiple paths to each enemy camp, and many strategic locations like bridges or mountain passes. If you're doing a fixed force or RPG scenario, you may instead want to create a more guided design, where the player has a specific route to follow, perhaps with a few shortcuts or alternative ways of reaching a set goal. And finally, if you're creating a cinematic scenario, you don't need to worry about creating a coherent map at all. Instead, you can set up each scene on its own in a very limited area. That leaves you with a patchwork of scenes rather than a coherent landscape. And when you're making such a guided experience, that's all you really need, because that's all the player is going to see. I mean, why design a full map when you're only going to show 20% of it? If you're new to map design, the most important thing to do is to start experimenting on your own. Take a look at the official campaigns and download some of the highest rated custom scenarios. Study how the designers created their landscapes and then try to do something similar yourself. Or, if you didn't like the way a designer did something, try to pinpoint why you didn't like it, and then do the opposite. I could do a whole series on just map design alone, but that is beyond the scope of this series. For now, I will leave you with 6 things to keep in mind while designing. First and foremost, make it look real. When I'm designing a map, especially for my custom scenarios, one of my chief goals is to make it look like a real place, and not something you would see in a random map. In a build and destroy situation, that's hard to do, as you have to arrange your buildings in a way that's practical to the player. But even then, it's always worth trying. And on a related note, nature should be natural. Always avoid straight lines when designing nature. If you take a look at a real forest, it doesn't look as if it was plonked down on earth with a square brush, and neither should the ones in your scenario. On the other hand, if you're designing a castle or a city with a defined plan, straight lines and blocks of buildings can be fine. But even then, it's usually best to break up the rigid patterns with disorganized marketplaces and other things that bring some chaos to the order. Number 3. Realistic elevation. Make sure your rivers always flow downhill and follow the lowest point in the land. Rivers very rarely split up in real life, but they often join together on their way to the ocean. Roads should also follow the path of least resistance. Remember that roads were generally built in places where people naturally wanted to walk so they would avoid the deepest ravines and tallest hills when possible. 
Number 4. Be consistent. If the map shows a single region, then it should only have a single season. In other words, no green leaves during the height of autumn and no brown ones in spring. If the story jumps from place to place or spans a long time period, then it's often good to do the opposite and make sure that each area or scene is distinct from the rest. But again, this depends entirely on what kind of story you're telling. Number 5. Eye candy in moderation. It's very common for inexperienced designers to think that the more eye candy you add, the prettier your map becomes. But very rarely is this actually the case. I have definitely been guilty of this myself in the past, but nowadays I try to keep the eye candy to a minimum. Otherwise it can quickly become a strain on the eyes. So every time you're about to place another broken cart or some flowers, ask yourself, is this object really necessary or am I just adding more stuff because something else is wrong with the composition of the scene? And finally, always aim high. If you want to evolve as a designer, you should always try to create something that is better than or different from the last thing you made. What that means in practice is up to you. You could make your next scenario prettier, larger, or smaller but more intricate. You could tell a grander story, or design a climate which you have never tried before. Once you have that better or different something, let it rest and allow yourself to actually be satisfied with your work. If you keep these things in mind and start experimenting, you will soon find that you're getting better and better at designing. The Siege of Vilnius is partly inspired by Beaumont in the East from the Ot Vies campaign by Philadelphia, as well as Blood of the Bear and other great custom sea scenarios. I've made my share of Defender Spot scenarios in the past, but never a structured large-scale siege with unique trigger mechanics like this. The campaign also didn't have any defense missions yet, so I thought it was a good opportunity to add one to the mix. The core of the gameplay is a twin mechanic of daytime assaults by a powerful enemy and a nighttime lull that allows you to gather your forces, rebuild your defenses and attack your weaker enemies. After the initial attack on the city, you also get to raid the Teuton supply carts, which will force them into a desperate final push. This is a bit different from how I normally structure scenarios, as I tend to lean towards a more story-driven adventure style, but it was definitely a fun experiment. The first thing I designed for the map was, of course, the city of Vilnius itself. I actually designed the whole thing in a single setting, in one of those moments of inspiration where you feel like you've been working for 15 minutes, but it turns out to be more like 4 hours. The design of the city is very loosely based on a map from the time, but my main goal was not to create an in-game replica of the real thing. Instead, I wanted to design something that was more realistic and beautiful than towns tend to be in Age of Empires 2. In most cases, town designs need to be utilitarian, as the player has to be able to efficiently use the buildings without getting their units stuck all the time, due to compact building placement. That's true for this scenario as well, and the player's buildings inside Vilnius all have a lot of empty space around them, precisely for that reason. But the rest of the city, which is essentially just a backdrop for the battle, has a much more compact and detailed design. The goal with a design like this is for it to feel like an actual place. I didn't want players to look at this and go, okay, so this consists of two barracks, two stables and some houses. I wanted them to feel like they were defending a real city and not just some random build and destroy camp. Creating detailed designs like this in official campaigns is tricky, but in the right context it can definitely work. These designs show that the editor can be pushed a lot further than is usually the case in official campaigns. The best example of this is the Pretty Town Contest, a map design competition at Age of Kings Heaven, which has so far run for 10 editions between 2002 and 2019. Some of its top entries take map design to a level that is unheard of anywhere else, and they can do this because each scenario is meant only to be explored with a single unit. There is no combat, no base building, just you and a big beautiful world to explore, often accompanied by a compelling soundtrack and storyline. If you want to learn from other people's designs, I highly recommend that you take a look at these.
After I was done with Vilnius, I designed the area around the player's starting location, which largely consists of these open hillsides, which I'm quite fond of designing. I also got to experiment a bit with the new swamp terrain and the beech trees, both of which had just been added to the game. The next major location was the Teutonic Siege Camp. I wanted it to look like it used to be a pretty field, which the Teutons had trampled into mud. Next up was the Teutonic Raider Camp, which is a pretty standard build and destroy base, but probably one of the nicer ones I've designed. I tried to add some natural features to make it look more like a real place, like this rocky hill which divides the camp, as well as the curving supply road in the back. Lastly, I designed the abandoned farms to the east and filled in all the empty green spots, one of which became the hilltop monastery used in one of the side quests. The Siege of Vilnius turned out pretty close to how I imagined it back when I was writing the script. The main changes were, as usual, due to the streamlining of the scenario. This meant I had to cut some of the dialogue, including some of the responses for when a supply cart got destroyed. An interesting aspect of the scenario is the day and night cycle. I really liked the attack and break cycle from Beaumont in the East, and I wanted to take it a step further in this scenario. The new night column mood, as well as the change column mood trigger effect, were created specifically for this scenario, and they can now be used by any custom designer who so wishes. The Siege of Vilnius is the only defend the spot scenario in the Adviga campaign, and it shows how Jogaila and Vitaudas grew closer as allies once they had a common enemy to fight. Next time, we'll go on a giant side quest in Vitaudas' crusade, where we join forces with Toktamish Khan and make war on the Golden Horde.